It's a new month, so that must mean that there's another new Sega Genesis and Mega Drive game out for our favorite 16-bit console. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. I spend weeks scouring the depths of the internet, traveling to all four corners of the earth to find you the latest games for our old classic consoles. But sometimes, just sometimes, someone sends me a brand new game that they've made. Awesome people like PSCD Games, Numskull, Retrobit and Pixelheart Games publish and bring us some of the best brand new games for our classic consoles. And now Megacat Games have sent me a brand new Sega Mega Drive game for me to play. Now this is the first time Mega Cat Games have sent me anything, so it'll be interesting to see what they've sent me. Diamond Thieves is an 8-bit inspired platform game from developers Mangunga team for your Sega Mega Drive. There's a very loose story around the game that sees you playing an alien who's trying to retrieve his stolen diamonds from a bunch of thieving robots so that he can fuel his ship and return home. Why it has to be diamonds when there's plenty of carbon surrounding the little fellow we never find out. Suffice us to say, we need these specific diamonds though. It's clear from the outset this game does not push Sega's 16-bit console to the limit. Far from it. In fact, the Sega Master System could probably manage to do a close approximation. But you don't need a game to use a console's full power for it to be brilliant. Just look at Vib Ribbon as an excellent example of this. So the main goal in Diamond Thieves is to locate and collect a diamond in each level. You're equipped with a recharging ray gun and the ability to jump. So just two buttons, nice and simple. Except it's not nice and simple. You see, the levels in Diamond Thieves are gated. You need to collect colored keys that once collected, open new areas of the level where you find the next key which is hidden. Collecting all four keys in the level ultimately leads to the diamond, which once collected ends the level. Now this is a platformer at its core and so has the tropes you'd expect to see in a platformer. Moving platforms, falling platforms, floating platforms, checkpoints, switches, buttons, movable objects and enemies. This means the two things working against you and trying to stop you from achieving your goal are environmental hazards and creatures vying for your untimely death. Let's cover the enemies first. There are three enemies that you'll encounter in the game. A yellow slime that moves between two points, these provide timing challenges to a level. A red slime that will also move between two points, but that will randomly stop and then move in the player's direction, making for a more tricky obstacle. And a hovering enemy that fires a projectile weapon that has a limited range. Now the enemies by themselves pose no real danger and are easily dealt with by simply navigating past them with your jump or shooting them with your weapon. What does make these enemies a real risk though is that they form a deadly symbiosis with the environmental hazards. A yellow slime by itself is laughable. A yellow slime on the edge of a platform that had a burning hot lava pit next to it is a real problem. Diamond Thieves uses a combination of enemies and environmental hazards to force the player into errors that will cause you to lose your health or just outright die. Jumping across a lava pit while a projectile forces you to either jump over it or jump to the next platform can all too often end with you losing a life. This combination in the early stages causes you to die again and again and again. You never feel that it's unfair and pretty much will always be because you try to rush through a section. And this is pretty much the whole game. There is the introduction of moving boxes, buttons and switches in later levels, but these are simple sequence problems to overcome, whilst they mix things up a little, never really make a huge difference to the overall level design and structure. Interspersed between the levels, there are some auto-scrolling sections that see a wall of lava pushing you along the screen. You'll need to navigate the level, collect keys and unlock new sections with precision timing if you want to survive these levels. You also have an end of stage boss to contend with. This Rayman-like enemy has an attack pattern that you'll need to memorize in order to beat them and move on to the next stage. There are a total of three bosses, three stages and nine levels in the game. As well as picking up keys and diamonds in the game, you can also collect coins. Collecting 10 coins give you an extra life and there are hearts in some levels for you to collect which replenish your life. 
To begin with, I found the game a nice challenge. I found myself thinking that this game was kind of like a 8-bit Meat Boy or Celeste. But as I progressed, the challenge started to disappear. Getting an extra life wasn't a big deal either, as the game gives you a password for every single level and acts almost like infinite continues. And the bosses were extremely easy as well. I like the password support system, but instead of every level, this should have been for every stage. So after three levels and a boss fight, this would have given the coins more prominence in the game. The boss levels are also carbon copies of each other and not being very difficult, were a bit of an anti-climax. Overall, the gameplay is solid and fun with some lovely level design in places, but it did leave me wanting more of the early stage challenge I had in the game. And it could do with another 90 levels, as depending on your skill, the game can be finished in a few hours. Now, two hours is not bad. After all, Sonic is a two hour game, but the need to gradually learn the level to progress is what helped make Sonic a compelling and a high retention game. Right, let's move on to the elephant in the room, graphics. It's no secret that 16-bit gamers not only love great gameplay, but also love great graphics. Most 16-bit gamers love to see their favorite console pushed to its graphical limits. The console wars of the 90s were fought in school grounds all over the world, and two words would settle any heated discussion, better graphics. Now, Diamond Thieves does not have better graphics. In fact, it's one of the more underpowered games in the system. That's not to say that the visuals are not pleasing to look at. On the contrary, they're extremely well drawn for an 8-bit game. And that's where some people will struggle to move past when considering to purchase it. Now, I'm not sure if this game started out or even came out for 8-bit consoles, or if this just is a homage to the 8-bit era. But that's the art style we get with this game. The sprites are simple but well drawn. There are some nice silhouettes describing the world, your character and enemies, and this helps with gameplay. And that's it. The visuals are well executed, functional and simple. There's a small intro to the game and each level gets a graphical interlude, which is nice, but it's nothing that will blow your mind. Audio is a different matter. I really enjoyed the soundtrack of this game. There's some fun, upbeat tracks and some darker tunes as well. The soundtrack is really well put together and I enjoyed listening to it as I played through the game. Sound design is very simple with only the most basic of sound effects for attacks and dying. Overall, I enjoyed Diamond Thieves. It's a fun little puzzle platform game with some nice touches. The visuals are 8-bit-esque, and if you're a fan of this art style, then you'll appreciate what the team have created here. Audio was a big highlight for me in this game, and I enjoyed dying many times over to the cheerful tunes. I also found a few secrets as well by going to the password screen and typing in a few choice dates. I also found this by doing exactly the same thing in Metal Dragon. Overall, I'm going to give Diamond Thieves a silver Retro Gamer Boy coin. That's it for this week's show. If you love brand new games for classic consoles, if you love Sega, the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, or just retro gaming in general, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. Now we put out brand new videos every single Monday. And so that you never miss one, make sure you also hit the little bell just below this video. And if Monday's too long for you to wait for, if you need something now, then why not check out our huge 
back catalogue of retro gaming videos, two of which you can watch over here.